everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and it's time to leave no dye, no pre-soak, no anything behind. Um, I have a lot of dye left over from some guar gum projects, and it doesn't necessarily store well, so I thought that I would use it up. Right now, I am adding a pre-soak that had started off as uh, some just plain tap water with three tablespoons of white vinegar. I had not measured the amount of dye that was in there. And I just pre-soaked some Stroll fingering weight yarn. We are in a, it's not quite low immersion because there is a lot of liquid in here, but low-ish immersion type situation. And we're going to start heating things up. We have a lot of leftover dye today, so I'm expecting we're going to end up with some really pigmented color. The three Dharma Acid dyes that we have mixed here are Deep Purple, Frozen, and Navy. But the thing that's the main difference is that one of these containers has guar gum, so it's really nice and thick. The other one is just mixed with water, sort of like normal. But I want to play around with all of this in our low immersion type setting so that way we can use up this residual color. We started off with about two cups of a 1% stock solution total. Yeah, I think that that's about right. And we've definitely used some, but I'm expecting we're going to end up with a deep, saturated, purpley color. But I am a little curious, and I do want to see how much of a difference there is between adding some dye with guar gum and some without in this type of situation. So there's some with guar gum. And here's some without. I can't be sure that my splash patterns are similar, but it do does look like we have sort of some sharper spread from the one with guar gum. It looks like, you know, we're definitely seeing some spread here and I'm seeing that it is sort of striking pretty, pretty close. And I don't think that that has to do with the, the volume. Yeah. Okay. If I press it, then it starts to spread out a bit, but huh, I'm not sure if I would ever go about that to have it intentionally as a tool for doing some low immersion type dyeing, but it's still sort of fun to think about. Let's go through and add this color. Oh, I mean, yeah, that doesn't quite look like much of anything that you normally get with some low immersion. Um, Oof, I'm going to want to save some of this for flipping to the other side. That just looks really, really cool. Uh, man, I really might have to come and revisit this. But now, I mean, now I'm just sort of splashing on. Whoops, I guess I'm not really leaving much of that for the other side, just some of the with guar gum. That's okay. I don't mind a little bit of color all over. As I said... We've got a lot. <laughs> now the deep purple ends up looking a little brown um, until it starts heating up. So I expect that we'll see that turning into more of the deep purple. Um, I might want to save some for the other side. But we can see the color is starting to spread out. I wonder if that's going to like how deeply that will or will not penetrate. Yeah, slowly you can see it's turning, turning purple. Oh, fun. I'm having so, so much fun with this. And ironically, the navy ends up looking fairly purple, um, which I think, it, which always just amuses me a fair amount. Um, I am really sort of enjoying the direction that this is headed. Um, I'm definitely using a lot more of the non guar gum colors sort of off the bat. Um, 
This is not quite where I thought that this would head, but I am really sort of digging it. Um, I'm not expecting to leave a lot of white behind, and I'm probably going to flip this in a second. But I would say right now, this is beautiful. Oh man. I am really, really liking the way that these colors, like the interplay and the way that they are interacting with one another. All right, I'm going to go ahead and give this, I think, two minutes, and then I'm going to come back and flip it. I am so excited by this technique. And you see this when you try to mix um, something with the guar gum with just plain water, um, in that you really have to stir it. It's sort of just, they stay a little separate until you force them together a bit. But let's flip this over. Ooh, look at all these tones. There is so, so much color in here already and I still have a lot lot left um, you could see when I flipped it that yeah we're gonna definitely have no whites in here that's not gonna be a concern at all um, I am curious hard to know like the the where I need more color and whatnot um, this is all absorbing okay I think especially around the ties I want some more and I've got some of this deep blue that I can add into spots but the the navy and the purple are so pigmented that they definitely sort of are stealing our show a bit here I suppose we might have some dye left behind I'm not 100% worried about like what was left well <laughs> I started cleaning the brushes and there was some color. May as well throw it on. I do like really, really saturated colors. Um, let's see. And the last is the little bit of navy that I've got. Um, I could save some in case I notice areas that I feel need more color, but oh, here's here we are with some of the guar gum color. Maybe I will. Eh. Okay, I can always rinse out these cups if I feel like I need a little more color somewhere. This is really dark, really moody right now. Um, oof. I am hoping that the colors do penetrate a bit in, and I have no idea where the other tie is, but I am still seeing some blue. There's just, you know, so, so much pigment around. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let this sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll come back. I love a good deep deep saturated color. So there's a lot of color in the corner still but here in the middle um, we've cleared a little area so it's just sort of worth pointing that out. Well actually there's a lot less color left than I might have anticipated. Um, I mean there's a lot of color left especially when moving it. We might need a yarn mop of some kind, but considering the sheer depth and amount of dye that I have added in, this like really isn't bad. I mean, this is looking fairly black almost. There is 
so, so much color in here. So much that I'm like, I, I've got a little more color in these cups. And well, maybe one more drop. <laughs> we might hit. Now, wait a minute. So if there was a full two cups of dye in this situation, that would be around 5% on weight of goods, which would give a very deep saturated color. And for colors like the deep navy, they actually recommend 4%. So that isn't so, so far off out of the realm of the universe. And the thing, things will look a little bit paler <laughs> once it is dry. Um, yeah, I'm not going to add any more color. Um, we might be throwing some dye down the drain. Um, but like a tiny bit of dye. I mean, I would say that I have successfully consumed what is left over. I'm going to go ahead and leave this on low heat for a half hour. And at which point we will come back and see if we need to use a yarn mop or something. Ooh, I don't know if I can get rid of that other color. I might hang on to that just in case for a little bit, in case we need a yarn mop. <laughs> but anyway, I'll be back in half an hour. It has been 30 minutes and, well, would you look at that? There is like a hint of color left in there, but I would say almost everything is in our yarn and I think that this yarn is going to be oh so delightful. Paler patch, I'm not going to worry. I do think I want to go ahead and add a good old splash of vinegar um, in here. Even though there was already a fair amount of vinegar, this is very, very saturated colors and I just want everything to have sort of the best chance of binding. But also at this stage I am going to go ahead and turn off the heat and let the yarn cool off in the dye pan for a little while. Um, there's not like there's a little bit of color in there so I'm not necessarily expecting that to absorb but it might. So yeah we're going to let this cool off. I just poured some water in my cups. Oh, hey. <laughs> I am not planning to, oh, I don't even know yet. Um, I'm going to let the other yarn cool off a bit and then I'll come back and decide what I want to do with all of this. After about 30 minutes of cooling, I am going to declare this pretty cooled. I'm really excited to see what the final color will look like once it is dry. But I'm gonna set that aside. And okay, there are some blues in the water. It was hard for me to know if it was like the pan that was being a little discolored. And we are going to use up all of this leftover dye because I cannot bring myself to just leave it. I mean, that is just nonsense. I know that overall this will be fairly purple. We've got some nice blue hints. Oh, the water is not warm at all right now, so I can use this to sort of rinse out some of these cups a little bit. Got some more water from our brushes. I think this was a guar gummy cup. Whoa. So we've got a little color, not a lot of color, but I do want to start heating things up um, because I want like the little bits that aren't dissolved. Maybe they'll dissolve. We'll see, but we're going to have a little bit of fun. Um, and now I can start actually cleaning the rest of these cups out. We are nice and hot, and I have stirred it up. There might be, it's hard to know if there's particles or just bubbles and shadows in there. 
Anyway, I now have 100 grams of Knit Picks Chroma Twist Bulky, which is 70% superwash wool, 30% nylon. It has a nice high twist, so it should absorb color pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to add a nice splash of vinegar. Now yeah, let's do one more splash. Why not? Okay, that's a big old splash of vinegar. Um, and yeah, we're gonna try to submerge this pretty quickly, I think. I did not add any extra ties. Um, I guess I'll add a zip tie. Reusable zip tie never did anyone wrong. Um, all right, we are going to now add our dry yarn into this pot as fast as we can. So I've got um, two things to help me press it down. Come on, submerge. <laughs> soak up, soak up this water. <laughs> oh, I haven't done this with dry yarn in a while. Um, I'm going to pull it out and sort of flip it. The nice thing with having a large volume of water is that that gives it some time. Um, the color's not striking, like, I mean, I think it's still striking fast, but there's still plenty of color in here. Um, just trying to get, this could end up with a tangled mess. I'm glad I added that zip tie on there. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there's a bit more color in here than I initially thought. Um, so I'm glad that I decided to go for one last sort of hurrah. And I'm glad that I'm dealing with a super wash yarn because I am <laughs> doing a lot of manipulation here. I don't think you guys can really appreciate the color differences that we are seeing here with the light and dark purples um, on this yarn. I have no idea if I'm going to end up leaving this one as is or if I'm going to want to uh, do something else with it, you know, maybe speckle it or something, but I will say that we've got some beautiful deep purples and then more almost gr lavenderish gray type colors in here. Um, very, very pretty. Some of the yarn bases that I dye with do sink in to a dye bath really, really fast, and this one did not. Um, but I think we've got this beautiful, beautiful tonal, um, very quite random tonal going on. And after just, goodness, it's been four minutes. Um, and most of the color has absorbed, um, but I am going to leave this in here. Um, we're going to just sort of let it sit now for uh, probably 10 minutes, and then we'll come back. Hold the phone. I'm still washing these brushes, and I have some more color. They just keep coming out with more and more color. So I will add it on to our yarn. Um, bring in a bit more, um, a br bit more tone into it. Not a ton, just a bit more. All right, carry on. <laughs> All right, after those 10 minutes, I am going to turn off the heat. Let's try picking this up by the zip tie. And actually, things are not as disordered as they appear, which is very good. Very, very good. Okay, I am just going to spread things out 
and I'm gonna let this cool off in the pan. I think on camera it looks like a little more lavender. In person it's fairly periwinkle and I'm just really excited to see like how shallow um, the color is. If it feels, you know, glazed or anything like that. Let's wash our dark midnight blurple yarn. This is one of the deepest saturated yarns I think I have ever produced in the history of Camerex. And for yarn this dark to get that little color coming out, hey, I'm happy. This will likely need a number of rinses. I will use a tiny bit of clear dish soap. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna rinse until we can get the water to run clean. I just wanna see if some soap, I'm using lukewarm rinse water. The seeing so, you know, some medium amounts of bleeding, which honestly I don't always get with acid dyes, but not something that surprises me here. So I'll be rinsing this a number of times, then we'll put the yarn through my spoon dryer and heat up the pump. And let's wash this last stain, our little stain of Chroma Twist. Get a good hand on it. I definitely feel something a little slimy, like, you know, some residual guar gum or something maybe is in there. I'm not sure. Or if it's just this Chroma Twist yarn. But the color. It's like really nice and fun, and I'm not seeing any bleeding. So I'm going to wash this one with some soap. Let's check. Oh, maybe a hint of something. But I am going to rinse out the soap, make sure the water is clear, and then clean this up to dry. Ooh, leave no dye behind. This is a gorgeous saturated color that is this midnight blue and purple and ooh, it is so so dark with some of these lighter patches that under a normal circumstance I would call extremely extremely saturated. In this video we weren't exactly looking for how the guar gum would make much of a difference but it does look like it could help keep colors from spreading out too much in a low immersion situation. So that could be worth exploring a bit in the future. We really didn't want to leave any dye behind. And so we used the leftover of cups and brushes to glaze a skein of Chroma Twist. There was really high acid in there and we had a reasonable volume of water. The colors didn't strike super fast. But since we added this skein of yarn in dry, we did get a beautiful shallow application of the color. So if you're going to take one of these strands and untwist it a bit, you can see just variation in there because the color really just hit the surface. Whether we are dyeing Nitpick Stroll, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, fingering weight, or Chroma Twist Bulky that is 70% superwash wool, 30% uh, nylon. These both take up colors beautifully and I love playing with them. Um, in general, I found for a glaze-like effect, it's best to do a yarn with a really high twist because that gives sort of a natural resist where you get more dye on the outside than the inside. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I hope that you enjoyed this uh, episode of Leave No Die Behind. Uh, there's always something beautiful that you can create with the leftover dyes, and really there's not much reason why you would need to toss anything. I am so, so excited to have this super deep, rich, saturated color. Um, and I really think I need to play around with high levels of saturation, higher percents of the depth of shade in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, give the video a like, and leave me a comment to let me know what you thought. 
If you are already a huge Chemnitz fan and you would like to support us on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon for early access to new content, behind the scenes sneak peeks, advanced notice of Etsy shop restocks, and more. You can find links to the Patreon in the video description and iCard. Thank you so much for watching everyone!